Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And this is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire lives, or until one of our lives is over or the universe itself explodes, to watching all Shonen Jump anime, starting with Gintama and also Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Today we're going to be talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX episodes 31 through 35. As some st- good stuff continues, as the the streak of good episodes continues in GXM, it was not it a does, one-time thing. Does. So, yeah, perfect intro. Let's get right to it, Zen. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 31. It's very rare for me to do a flawless intro, so whatever it does, I have to ruin it in some ways. Let's go <laughs> start talking about Episode 31. Kronos versus Vampire Camulla, or as it's called, oh my god, I can't believe they call it this here, as it's called in the English version, Field of Screams, Part 1. So it's a three-parter in the English sense, but in Japan they don't treat it as a, as a part of anything, because they're all separate duels. That's yes. funny. <laughs> That's funny how they... they, they in, the, in the dub version they treat it as like a the overarching mini fight against this person. Oh, that makes sense, because this is she basically runs a train through at least some of these dudes here. She takes out some important key dudes for later. So tell us what the episode's about, Zen. So, we start on a creepy boat in the ocean, which is funny because it kind of reminds me of Dio. Um, <laughs> it does. Where there's just a, ca- a casket in the boat, and then oh, she's I- like, ah, I'm a fucking vampire. Yeah, dude. Um, if, if it was actually Dio coming to come duel Ju- Judai and the crew, they would never have fucking survived. No, they had no shot. <laughs> if um, if Dio wanted the Phantom Beasts, he would have the Phantom Beasts. <laughs> um, Judai's in the hospital because of the duel with uh, Darkness. He's worn out. Um, really good job of selling how dangerous the Dark Duels are. Yes, I want you to know that they're no joke. Because in, you know, in the original Yu Gi Oh, it's kind of like, oh, you won, you're fine, you know. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But in these ones, he's like, no, he's he's pretty fucked up. Yeah. Um. The vampire bitch arrives. Um. And there's like a a bunch of rumors going on, and everyone's like, be on your guard. The the vampire woman is here, and they're all trying to determine who is going to duel them, because. Um. Judah is not in condition to do so. Uh, the the bats are like stealing info on their decks and stuff. Um, Net decking, basically. Basically, yeah. She's like spying on their decks. Mm. Um, and so everyone runs down, and they they uh, Hayato is like, I found her, and they all run down, and um. They find her there, and she, I think, wants to duel Kaiser first. Um, but Crowler ends up dueling her, and she's yeah, like, I'm not going to yeah, let they, you hurt my student. They do a bit yeah. where they're like, who goes forward first? And I think it ends up being both of the teachers are hiding behind the students, and then accidentally uh, Kronos <laughs> gets put up. And he actually says, I think, oh, I accidentally stepped forward. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but everyone's like, takes yeah. it as, oh, you're so brave. <laughs> you're going to go and see what's up with her. Um, they start the duel, and Kyler's like talking a little bit of that good shit, and then it turns out that she's actually pretty good. Uh, she ends up pretty much beating his ass the majority of the time. He does have this little comeback moment that's pretty good. Uh, eventually, Judai gets down there, and he kind of goes on this speech about like, I don't believe in the dark duels and everyone's like that's really stupid judai was just in one we saw it um but then it turns out that he meant like dueling is meant to bring light to people it's meant to be a good thing and using it for darkness is is wrong and cruel and i won't uh approve of dueling being done that way and And then as he realizes he's about to lose there's kind of a a nice moment there where he doesn't call judai dropout boy anymore oh Um, very very touching yeah, Calls and then he does lose, um, and his first spirit, the first spirit key is gone, and his soul is put into a doll, but she does not want the doll, and she just kind of leaves it on, and heads back to her little 
vampire castle. Yeah, and that's how the episode ends. So, Zen, what were the differences in adaptation? Because I can tell you one big scene I'm pretty sure was not in the dub version, but you can tell us <laughs> if it okay. gets mentioned. So, mm-hmm. in the dub, uh, Chaz is messing with his cards, um, and they change the cards that are that he's messing with. Um, in the uh, Japanese version, he has cards that are actually in his deck. Mm-hmm. And in the English version... He has Dedication Through Light and Darkness, which is a Magician of Black Chaos card. <laughs> uh, Arsenal Summoner and The Tricky, which just random cards. I don't know why. Wow. The Tricky. Yeah. Sure. Um, in the dub version only, when uh, Kaiser is messing with his cards, uh, you can see Swords of Revealing Light and Fushio Richie instead of any Cyber Dragon cards. Um, okay, so... In the Japanese version, Asuka isn't happy that Kronos is dueling and is like, I don't, I don't want to see anyone else get hurt like Judai did. In the dub version, she says, I don't want to see Crowler dueling because he's a terrible duelist and he's going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. Um, fucking savage. In the Japanese version, uh, the vampire says, okay... If does anyone else want to switch with Kronos then? And he says that that was rude of her. In the English version, he says, um, she says, you're not worthy of dueling me. And Crowler says, excuse me, I have a PhD in dueling that I got through nine years of dueling school. With ten confirmed kills. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing that I was, uh, wasn't sure if they put in the dub version, there's a lot of shots of uh, Kamula just bathing <laughs> that I wasn't sure if it was in the dub version. I believe it is. Yeah. Really? They're, I guess they're okay with a bath. I guess there's nothing wrong with taking a bath. <laughs> it's yeah, just everyone, a bath. Everyone's got to get a bath, you know? Exactly. All right. Fair enough. Good. I guess kind of strangely progress that, that had to have awakened something on some poor, poor unfortunate child though. <laughs> really into like either goth chicks or vampire chicks <laughs> after, <laughs> after seeing one bathe. Uh, so yeah, my specific notes on here. Um, the, the I have it. It opens up with a black and white boob shot of the new vampire lady. Very classy. <laughs> Some good, fantastic, classy stuff there at the beginning. I kind of like the bat spies um, because they show how everyone's reacting to the news of there being a potentially another uh, seven star dude in there. And there, a lot of it is tweaking their decks. Um, I think Kronos is the only one who's not doing anything. And they go to the professor, the cat professor, and what he's doing is has a bunch of garlic and he's basically praying for the vampires to go away. And yeah, the he's bat- doing like anti-vampire rituals. <laughs> yeah, and the bat that is spying on him is himself is like, uh, is, is like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I also really like that it's Hayato that's constantly revealing stuff. I think this is a continuation of stuff where, for some reason, whenever any signer, or not signer, because that's in 5Ds, but any one of these seven-star dudes is around, it's always Hayato who's the one who tells them. <laughs> He's always the one who's just like, hey, there's someone there, and he basically gets everyone to walk, and the reason is is because <laughs> Judai has to use him for his legs. Yeah, he has to carry Judai everywhere in this one because he's too injured. Yeah, so he carries him around everywhere, which is really funny. Um, I took it as something silly when he said, I don't believe in such things as dark duels, but when he actually gives his reasons, I was like, all right, good. That was a good setup there at the beginning. It was more of a, I really thought they were doing a Kaiba thing, where Kaiba's entire thing is like, I don't believe in magic, even though it's like literally happening right in front of him. And he was just like, eh, whatever, it's not real. Whatever, fucking mirrors, him and Hercules saying, it's nothing but mirrors, brother. I don't believe it. <laughs> um, but his ideas of the it shouldn't actually, like, it's dark, it shouldn't be involved, it shouldn't exist is very nice. And it actually goes back to the part where he says, um, these students shouldn't be involved in this in general. I don't approve of them being in there. Um, when she actually says, like, I would much rather have Kaiser, and he says, like, you will not touch a single student as long as I'm here. He's my precious student, you will not lay a finger upon him. I thought that was very good because it at least shows because it takes him a while it like later on you get that moment where he kind of has a 
Judai, you are good too. <laughs> he has his Majin Vegeta moment. Yes, you too, dropout boy. <laughs> but at that moment when he's talking about um, he doesn't want Kaiser to be involved in this and it's because he's a student and God damn it, if I'm going give to give him up to some vampire woman, uh, I thought was very nice. Um, there's a part where he's getting hit by the bats during the Dark Duel where he says, Mamma Mia to the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> he cannot turn off the Italian. It's just what he is. <laughs> it's just so much. And then I had the joke of uh, if there was a gun pointed at him, he would say, Ravioli pasta, what a huge salamone I'm in. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Which salamone is uh, Italian for pickle based off of Google Translate when I looked it up. I like that all his ancient gears are called, like, Precious Bullet, Precious Bite, which is really funny when <laughs> he, when the ancient gear soldier is just shooting a machine gun and he calls it the Precious Bullet. I think that's good. Um, at one point, when the, when the ancient gear werewolf goes to bite the werewolf, it looks like he's biting him in the dick. <laughs> yes, that does happen. Uh, it was really good. And in general, I thought this was a very good, like, redemption for Kronos. After being basically a dick for an entire, like, 30 episodes, he has his moment to shine. He has his moments of, like, when he's about to lose, he doesn't go, like, Oh, no, 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 don't do it. No, no, please. Not in the face. Nothing. He doesn't do anything like that. He's just like, hey, I want you to learn from this. Because I'm about to fucking die. So you need to be prepared if this happens to you. Because he's fully prepared to be like, no, this is the end of me. This is where my journey stops. So I ended up really liking him for the end of this. I already kind of liked him because he was making just nothing but Italian things. But in terms of a character, I thought he had a very good showing. And for the first time ever, even though he's literally lost every single duel that he's ever been a part of, slight uptick in stock from me. I think it really he really shines in this episode. <laughs> he does exactly what he needs to do, which is to show off how dangerous these seven seven star assassins, I think is what they're actually called in Japanese, but they don't ever translate the assassin part. Yeah, it's it, in the English version it's just the shadow riders. Yeah, shadow riders. But you know, you need to have a dude who's good to showing how dangerous the enemy can be, and he does a very good job of showing why for some reason Specifically, Carmilla might actually be the most dangerous of any of these Shadow Riders. Yes. Based off of her deck and stuff like that. I also really like that she kind of uh, outplays. So because she's able to actually see what his deck had with the bat, she actually plays a trap card that is anti-Heavy Storm because she knows he himself uses Heavy Storm as a tactic. Because she mm -hmm. saw inside the deck. So I thought it was actually a good inverse of his very first duel against Judai. Where he used Heavy Storm on a trap card that only activated when Heavy Storm is activated. And in here he loses because a trap card was activated that could only be activated if it is destroyed. So I thought it was very well done. Very good episode and a good start to this specific uh, arc of stuff. Also, there's some... she ha Carmilla has, like, maybe one of the greatest themes in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX so far. She has, like, this Castlevania theme that plays every single time she shows up. Which is fucking Yeah, she does have great. a very, like, Castlevania-esque theme. Yeah, it goes like... It'd be like borderline going do 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 but it do do. It's almost like that, but not exactly. But it's very good. So, a good start and a good duel. How do you feel, Zan? I know. I remember this is an episode you constantly refer to me when you talk about the differences between. um Yes, because this is one of the most egregious ones. Um Where you know, in the Japanese version, Crawler has like these good moments, and he's like he kind of redeems himself a bit and everyone's actually pretty hurt and like sad to see what happens to him. And in the English version, they're just like, I told you that idiot would fucking lose. What a scrub loser. Yeah. Which I feel it's better that to them to just be like, because Judai says it is like, you were pretty cool there at the end. And it's like, yeah, he was, it's okay to admit it. It's okay to admit sometimes a shit person does something cool. It's much more human in that way. And I say that knowing for a fact that a couple episodes ago, he unleashed some kind of stoner into the greater world to take revenge. 
So, yeah, it's, this, this is definitely one of the ones where I feel like... Because I remember, funny enough, I remember when I saw this in the English version, this was the episode that made me kind of like Ancient Gears. Because I was like, oh, Ancient Gear Castle kind of looks sick. And I like the idea of being able to summon Ancient Gear Golem without sacrificing. So... I've always kind of liked Ancient Gears, so it also kind of helps that it makes it a little bit easier for me to like Kronos, too, for some reason. Sometimes an archetype can carry a character if it's good enough. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, anything else specific before we move on? No, I think that's about it. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on to the next episode, which is called Fill the Screams Part 2 for the dub and Kaiser versus Kamula Phantom Demons Gate a ac- gate is activated a much longer name yes so everyone has kind of gathered up um and they're kind of regrouping after the loss of Kronos Judai wants to duel next and everyone tells him no because he's still injured so he eventually decides that he's not um Kaiser heads off to duel her alone because he wants to knock her out quickly um, the dude is pissed. Yes. Once again, Hayato carries Judai there. Um, and they all go back to her castle the next night. Judai, uh, Manjome, and I think Daichi um, are all trying to take the game. And she refuses them all and says that she wants Kaiser, who du- duels her. Yeah, I think she says specifically, I don't want, I'm not interested in boys or the woman. <laughs> Yes, she specifically wants the the man. Mm-hmm. Um, the duel begins, and Kaiser is pretty much just pushing her around the entire time. Um, when it seems like he's got her dead to rights, she activates Illusion Gate, which allows her to wipe his field, summon any monster that uh, he has used up to this point, which she uses on Cyber End Dragon. And the cost to do so is just a soul, but it's just like any of them. Like it doesn't have yep. to be her own. So she chooses to use um, Show's no. soul as the cost. So she puts Kaiser in a position where if Kaiser stops her and wins the duel, uh, Show will lose his soul. And so he opts to essentially throw and lose on purpose so uh, to protect Show. And so he is put into another doll and he loses his key. Yeah, and that's the end of it here for this episode. Uh, tell us about the differences, if there were any, then. Uh, oh, there always are. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, in the Japanese version, the uh, glasses professor from Slifer Red mm-hmm. is still actively hiding um, from everyone. Uh, in the dub version, they make it like a, a, a pun, and he's just chasing after the cat. He's like, they're trying to not like make him look quite so cowardly. In the Japanese version, Sho is a little shocked to see that Kaiser opens up with Powerbond, saying that he seems angry, like he's dueling for for the kill, Mm -hmm. which is not what he normally does. Um, In the English version, they reference back to this speech that... um, Remember the episode where Sho takes Powerbond, or gets Powerbond taken away from him by Kaiser? Yes. In the English version, he gives this speech that's like, you're just using this card, but you're not playing it. Um, and Sho re- reiterates this here in the English version, that uh, Kaiser using the card there is just using it, but not playing it. And it was like, okay. Um, Getting his licks in while he can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in the Japanese version, there's some banter about um, Kaiser's a tactic of using power bond and then following it with defusion so that he avoids the effect damage because cyber and dragon is no longer on the field um that is all cut out of the english version and instead she just kind of talks about how awesome her best card is vampire genesis this fucking vampire jobber. genesis yeah um, the worst version of vampire lord <laughs> <laughs> yes uh in the japanese version when she kidnaps show she bites him on the neck uh, they cut that out of the English version completely. And then instead, in the English version, they add in a joke where Sho is like, 
my mom always said, I got the looks in the family. And then um, Kaiser got everything else. <laughs> and they cut that out. That, that's not in the Japanese version. In the English version, it, it is added in. <laughs> He's a lot more jokey in this, in the dub version. Yes, Sounds everyone like... is. It's all Fair attitude enough. and joke yeah. all the time. And I also have to make a mention... Power Bond is actually different in the anime than it is in the uh, in the game. In the in the, if you are curious what the anime version of Power Bond does, I'll say it right here. This card's name is treated as polymerization. Send from your hand or your side of the field to the graveyard fusion material monsters that are listed on a machine type fusion monster card, and special summon that fusion monster from your fusion deck. The special summon fusion monster attack is doubled during the end phase of your turn. The player who controls this monster takes damage equals to the original attack of the monster. So, Interesting. yes, in the actual version of Power Bond, no matter what happens, you're taking damage equal to the original attack of the summon monster when it was summoned. So, even if you defusion in the actual game, you won't be saved because the effect activates as soon as you played the card basically but here it, the effect doesn't activate till the end phase so if it's not there by the end phase or even better you somehow creature swap it and gave it to the opponent they would take the damage uh -huh. <laughs> which is an insane version of power bond because this version of power bond can also just be there's a lot of polymers a lot of cards that just search for polymerization so you can easily kind of get power bond in your hand um, as opposed to actual power bond, which is not treated as polymerization. So you have to just get it with a card that specifically says get power bond or get a card that fuses or something like yeah. uh, Verte or something. So I thought that was cool because I was like really curious because I was like, damn, is this duel going to end in one move? But it was like, no, OK, the, the, the game continues. I thought this was also funny because it shows... The terrible versions of the Cyber Dragons. <laughs> the, um, what, what is their names? Cyber Dragon Barrier? Cyber Barrier Dragon. Yeah, and the... What is this card called? The Attack Reflector Unit. Special Summon... No, there's another one besides Cyber Barrier. There's the Cyber Laser. There you go. Um, two cards that were extremely hard to actually summon, so nobody ever used them because it's just better to have a 2100 beat stick that doesn't need to be tributed if your opponent has card advantage at this time. So it was kind of funny seeing them because I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I was so used to nobody using any of the other Cyber Dragon cards that I actually kind of forgot that there was more than them, basically. So it was kind of funny seeing them there. Uh, this fucking card that Camula has, Car 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 Carmula, Camula, yeah. Camula. There you go. Thank you. Um, this Illusion Gate might actually be the most broken card in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's extremely overpowered, and I like how the cost is just like eh, whatever. I mean, it's just a soul. Just throw yes. it out there. If you want to talk about the most insane, like Yu-Gi-Oh ruling legal shit, it's the fact that because the card does not specify your soul you can use any soul <laughs> uh -huh. so that means whatever you want. yeah whatever someone's soul is going to be offered to them it's fine uh and for the time having regeki and monster reborn that ignores summoning conditions because that's the important part of the card it says ignore the summoning condition that's insane it's honestly insanely broken and it's crazy that she loses the only reason spoilers that she loses using this card is because she eventually uses it to bring back a garbage card yeah. she gets mm -hmm. when you're getting back cyber and dragon who's a 4,000 attack crazy beat stick yeah it's worth it to maybe offer a soul but when you're going for elemental hero tempest maybe hold off a little bit <laughs> yeah Girl, your soul is not that worthless. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> hold on to it just a little bit more. Have some dignity. Well, to be fair, she gets she gets tricked, sort of. Yeah, to be fair, she thought she had the game at that time, but come on, <laughs> come on. Yeah. So yeah, this card is crazy. Apparently, there is another version that is in Tag Force. In Tag Force, the effect of this card is actually different because you can't offer a soul because that's not a good enough negative <laughs> aspect in a PSP game. So at the end of the turn, your life points are reduced by 90%. That's, 
that's the effect of it if you use it in the tag force games hmm, that's everything yeah very good still yes it, everything else still applies destroy all monsters Funny enough, I do remember having this card used against me and being like, what the fuck is this broken-ass card? <laughs> Didn't make any sense to me. Um, but other than that, into the actual episode, um, I thought it ended up being very nice. I like the Zane doll at the end and its fucking silly eyes that it has. Yes. Zane, yeah. Kaiser always it's has like, like little beady eyes. Yeah, he has like little beady eyes, which is really funny to me. I liked how he started this duel just mad, straight Malden over his teacher being turned into a doll. He's like, I'll fucking show her what's up. You want me? Come fucking get me. And the only reason she's able to even get beat him is because she offers up show. And I also like that moment where show's like, dude, don't. I'm not worth it. He's basically going, I'm trash. I'm worse. What is, one of the funniest things he says, show, my dueling skills are the equivalent of a B5 parking garage. <laughs> Which is the most... <laughs> He's like, I'm not worth the bullet. Just don't. <laughs> I'm worthless. I'm garbage. And after going on to this tirade, all Kaiser has to say is like, don't <laughs> don't be so down. Have confidence is basically what he says. And then he gets yeah, his life for it. Yeah, basically like... Um, something like have confidence and that I'm not willing to to lose you to this which was sweet considering their relationship prior to that yeah considering that prior to this their relationship is kaiser sends him vaguely subtweeted single single word messages and he has to interpret what that means (laughs) (laughs) and he has to go like oh fuck i don't know what my brother wants from me but yeah i thought it was a very nice moment i like the beginning here where judai is like uh, he keeps saying, like, I'm, I'm gonna go get him, and then they basically put him under the covers. And he's, like, struggling under the covers, still trying to talk, and Manjomi says, shut up! And he goes, okay. <laughs> he's yeah, still under okay. the covers. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like that bit where he ke- keeps using Hayato as his fucking, <laughs> his legs, and he's like, alright, go! Go for <laughs> I think that's really funny. Um... And let me see, what other things I got here? Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. I thought it was another good episode. I thought it was another continuation of continuing to build up the threat. Continuing to make her look kind of like... Because the thing is, is it's always difficult in these type of situations where it's like seven duelists versus seven duelists. And you know that the protagonist cannot basically lose. So the other dudes kind of have to lose and it kind of depends. Um... Funny enough, I do think Kronos and Kaiser, because of their Obelisk Blue status, are too high priority to make you think like, well, Kronos' deck literally has dudes that are like immune to trap and effects or can negate it, so it'd be very hard to beat them. And Kaiser also uses the Cyber Dragons, and he was able to beat Judai in basically one turn. And in general, he has the ability to OTK anyone in any given single turn. So you kind of need to take care of them as quickly as possible. Otherwise, it's going to be like, well, how are any of the other ones going to stand a chance? So it kind of makes sense to me to take them down this way. And it kind of makes sense the way they get taken down. So very enjoyable stuff. Very good for the second of the seven rider stuff, I think. Yeah, and you kind of got to take Kaiser out of the picture because he's like built up to be invincible. So they took him out in a nice way that showed like he was going to win. Like, he was in complete control, but she basically cheated. So, Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think it ends up making sense because, again, when you have a character that strong, which is probably what a lot of series, funny enough, it's not just this one, but it's also like Battle Shonen's. When a character is too strong for the current level, you the person keeps thinking, like, why doesn't this character just show up and kind of save the day? And sometimes they do, and then you kind of go like, well, yeah, if they were just there from the start, then it wouldn't have mattered. But if you can take uh-huh. them out early on, I think it ends up being a case of, like, uh, it ups the stakes in, in a certain ways. And I think it's always nice when they kind of do that. It's very similar to, I guess, when they took out Goku at the start of the, um, after Raditz, where they're like, well, if we keep Goku around, we know for a fact that uh, he would he's always the de facto strongest person there. But if you take him out, kill him, and then basically put him far away from the action and he has to go back in there, you build up to the moment where eventually when the bad guys have basically run rough shot of everyone, a hero can come in and have the big hero moment and it's kinda cool and stuff like that, so Yeah. Good stuff. 
Mm-hmm. They had to deal with Kaiser, and this is a good enough way to deal with it. He's just too good. Yeah, too good to be left around. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, Kronos is in the same way, except for Kronos doesn't get the same level of respect. <laughs> so Yeah, no, he doesn't. Fair enough. Uh, anything to say about this one before we move on? Uh, no, nothing more to add. I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about. All right, cool. We'll go on to episode 33, Field of Screams Part 3, or if it's known as the Japanese version, Shine, Shining Flare Wingman. Yep. So, fun fact, this is the anime debut of my favorite monster, which is Shining Flare Wingman. It's pretty cool. Um, So, Judai decides that he's had enough, and it's time to main character the fuck out of this. He's sick of people losing, so he's going (laughs) to take care of business. Um... Just like John Cena. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm in. It's, just, it's enough now. So he goes in. Um, they begin the duel. Um, Atticus, aka Fubuki, is like semi awake now. He's like not in a coma anymore, but he's like not really able to move or anything. And he um, reveals that the charm that Judai has from winning the other half from him is going to be important to actually defeating her. Uh, In the middle of the duel, she does, in fact, try to use Illusion Gate in the same way to put to basically make him forfeit or else he'll lose all of his friend's souls. But the Shadow Charm stops that from happening and forces her to bet her own instead because it's the only one she has that the that she has control over, basically, Mm -hmm. because the charm is blocking her from getting to anyone else. Um, she eventually says that I that she reveals that she was spying with the bats, and so even without the 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 cheating of the gate, she'll still be fine because she knows every card that Judah has. And then Judah reveals you definitely don't because he drops Shining Flare Wingman. She says that she did not know about this monster and she doesn't know where it came from, and she is defeated with an attack from Shining Flare Wingman. And the second Shadow Rider is dealt with. And we get Kronos and Kaiser back in their bodies. Yeah. Well, Kronos, who had been hanging out with uh, Manjome this entire time. Because apparently if you just have, if you're ugly and you're tiny, you just hang out with Manjome. <laughs> and that's your, your, that's your go-to go, dude. Um, what are some differences between uh, this version of the dubs then? So in the... Um... In the Japanese version, the hand that comes out of the illusion gate to uh, take away Kamula's soul grabs her by the throat and is like choking her out. That scene is cut completely from the dub. It's just not there at all. Yeah. Can't choke a woman, then. Yep. In the dub version, uh, Kamula activates illusion gate and Judai's charm counters her. And she says, oh, well, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to win anyway, so I'll bet my own soul. In the Japanese version, she has no choice but to bet her soul because the card was already activated and she has to pay the cost. Some Yu-Gi-Oh! ass so, ruling. She got taken yes. down with a Yu-Gi-Oh! ruling. She lost to the rule book, baby. Um, Judge? <laughs> Judge, I don't want to... Don't... <laughs> you have to offer the soul. You have got to offer have... the soul. I'm sorry, you flipped the card. Damn um, it. Yeah. So in the Japanese version, she does get stuck by the ruling. Whereas in the English version, they make it seem like she was just overconfident and chose to do so anyway mm. um there are multiple scenes in the japanese version where camula like stretches her jaw out and look yeah. like to look more monstery um yeah. yeah those are cut from the dub because i guess that's too spooky they would again awaken something in some poor child if they saw that um, someone out there deep into that in the japanese stuff. version she mentions that humans basically were racist against vampires um and drove them to near extinction. In the dub version, it is not racism. It's just that we don't know what happened. Humans wow. and vampires lived together, and then eventually they fought. And I don't wow, know why. Wow, four kids. What is this? Is this four revisionist kids, yeah, history? From, uh, a revisionist history on the vampire wars. Oh, yeah. The vampires all enjoyed it. They were there in the, when the Mayflower came over, and they had the first Thanksgiving. And then, I don't mm-hmm. know. Communication fell through. <laughs> This is, uh, yeah, Four Kids is clearly not in favor of critical race theory. They don't want any of that in their uh, their Yu-Gi-Oh. For shame. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> critical dual theory. <laughs> critical <laughs> critical vampire theory, not here. <laughs> nope, not accepted. And then this uh, is And obvious. then, yeah, there's, there's also a scene when Camilla is describing the humans turning on the vampires where you see one being staked by a vampire hunter, and that is cut out of the dub as well. They were like, oh, we can't show this side of history. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all, all the, of vampires the vampires just all went away. We don't know what happened. Yeah, that's crazy. They all just stepped out into the sun. That's fucking wild. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Revisionist for kids history. All right. So here's some stuff I got in here. Um, when Junai is saying, I'm going to make you pay. And the very next card he draws is his strongest soldier, Elemental Hero Avion. <laughs> It's a great shot. I love it. No matter what, Avion is fucking there for it. He needs him, actually, funny enough. Um, I called offering your soul for the elemental hero Tempest might go down in history as the worst trades in history. <laughs> in no way would anyone ever <laughs> make this deal, but she was kind of forced, her hand was forced on this one. To be fair, it wasn't her soul that she thought she was giving up, so I'll give her much, that much for her. Um... So at this point, she talks about the whole reason that she joined the Shadow Riders is that the main dude basically promised her that the ability to resurrect the lost vampire race. And she says, like, you know, I'm the last of my race. It's on my shoulders. We have to win at all cost. And here's my thing. Um, she is a lady vampire. There's nothing really stopping her from just kind of repopulating it herself. <laughs> Similar to a man vampire, I guess. I guess my idea is, like, is there just something inherently wrong? Does she feel like humans don't deserve it or something? I, she should I be able know. to. I guess, yeah. There's a lot of flaws in her logic, and maybe she just, like, hates humans so much that even the idea of mm, potentially being with one, she couldn't repopulate it. But I think that I felt like the similar thing of, like, I always have this problem with dudes specifically who say, I'm going to bring my clan back, basically. And I feel the same way about Sasuke, that Sasuke's entire thing for... He was beating the drum of, I'm going to bring back the Uchiha's. And so far, he has made one daughter. And that's not enough to bring back an entire clan. I feel like he's kind of slacking on his duties. It feels like Yeah, you're really not trying very hard. No, he's not. And then eventually, he's going to pass on, and he's not going to be able to make any more kids. And then it falls onto his uh, daughter, and then that's a inf- very unfortunate thing to give to your child. <laughs> at least give her a brother or a sister or something. That's how I. That was my basic thing. While I was looking here. I was like, I don't fully understand. I also always understood it that vampires could just bite someone and turn them into a vampire. But I guess she did do that in a show, and it didn't work. So maybe these vampires are different. Hmm. Critical vampire theories. Then I need to learn more about the vampires. <laughs> I need to know mm-hmm. more of their their callings and stuff. <laughs> uh, I really liked the summoning of Shining Flare Wingman. <laughs> I thought it was cool when he showed up. I also liked it when she's like, "Did you know that I was cheating? Cheating the entire time you added him to the deck?" And he's like, "No, man. I just you know things have been really dark lately, and I thought my deck could use some little brightening up, so I added this shiny Flare Wingman, which I thought is maybe the most like Judai response to anything." Um, yeah, I just I thought I could use a monster that is literally bright. Yeah, he was like, uh, I wasn't thinking about how strong he was. I wasn't thinking about how tactical it was to Adam. I was feeling a little down, and you know what? This man was bright, and I needed that in my life, <laughs> and he gave me that. Which is funny, because Shining Flare Wingman is by far the best elemental hero that he's played up to this point. Yeah, 100%. With his in terms ability. of like effectiveness. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Um, I really like when Shining Flare Wingman deals effect damage. Flame Wingman shoots uh, his dragon arm and sh- hits him with fire. Shining Flare Wingman just kind of, you know, shines on her. <laughs> he just shines goes up to even brighter on her, yeah. yeah. Which I thought was really good. I thought that was really funny because he just kind of like sides up to her and is just like, mm, Shiny, <laughs> you can't deal with this. Take 3,000 hits of damage from this. Show gives maybe my favorite line, which I will constantly be using from this day forward, which was a new elemental hero with 2,500 attack points. Because <laughs> if you don't know this, all the elemental heroes, all they do is release a new elemental hero with 2,500 yeah, attack points. Yeah, it happens almost constantly. Because Neos has 2,500 attack points. 
Mm-hmm. So every time they release like a base Neos fusion monster, it almost always has 2,500 attack points. A week ago, the new set that just dropped in English has a Neos card, a new elemental hero with 2,500 attack. Uh-huh. So I'm going to be using this anytime a new elemental hero shows up with 2,500 attack. <laughs> It's my go-to. I love that line. Um, and in general, I thought this episode was great. It was a good kind of ending for her. I think it's really funny that this broken card that can summon any card loses to, to the elemental heroes because, well, one, it's funny because the elemental heroes are, historically at this point, a little trash. But also it's kind of fitting because the elemental heroes are a deck that really wants to kind of have synergy with itself. So even if she did take whatever elemental hero, it would be kind of useless to her because it doesn't really fit the deck because Judai's deck is specific to be like, there's a synergy to it where her, where his cards work perfectly for him, but I don't think in the inverse. And basically anyone that has ever tried to take his elemental heroes have always lost. Because uh-huh. you just can't win with the elemental heroes unless you are specifically Judai. Yeah, in this it's just part of who he is. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I thought it was a good episode. How'd you feel? This is your dude, Shining Flare Wingman. This is my dude. So the Shining Flare Wingman is actually who I think should have been uh, Judai's ace monster instead of Neos. Uh, Because Neos is the only one that breaks the pattern. So if you look at all the ace monsters from the original up through the the most recent one, Reigns or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, all of the characters' ace monsters are from the primary summoning method of that series. So, like, you've got the Dark Magician, who's just a tribute summon, which was, you know, they added that in Battle City. That was the whole thing. You've got Stardust Dragon in 5Ds, which is a synchro monster. You've got um, Utopia, which is in Xyz. And then you've got, I think it's called Firewall Dragon. Yeah. And Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, which are Pendulum and Link monsters, respectively. So Judai's Ace should have been a fusion monster. Um... Shining Flare Wingman fits with the attack points. It's got the 2,500 base attack points, just like all the other ace monsters do, except it is a fusion monster. Um, So Neos is the only one that doesn't fit, because he is not summoned by the trademark summon method of the series that he comes from, which would be fusion summoning. Yeah. He does have a lot of fusions, but all of them are not as good as base Neos. At least Yeah, well, one, all the fusions are bad, and two, I believe Shining Flare Wingman is the only one that fits the 2,500 attack point rule. Um, okay. I don't think... I can, off, off the top of my head, I don't know of any other elemental hero fusion monster from the GX era that was like out back then yeah. that I, I, uh, fit. I see what you're saying, though. He does kind of... When you put it that way, he does fit a little bit more than Neos. I think the problem that they probably ran into, which is a self-made problem, because the answer is very simple, just let Judai run King of the Swamp, uh, the problem is that he, Shining Flare Wingman requires elements of hero Flame Wingman uh-huh. and Spark Man. So he needs to already use Fusion. <laughs> the only way he was even able to summon him here is through Fusion Gate. And even then he wasn't able to take advantage of the full effect to get, um, cause all those elemental heroes were banished. So I think it would ended up being like, I agree that he should have been the main one, but I think they themselves wrote themselves into a terrible corner where... It's pretty hard to get Shining Flare Wingman unless you specifically just give Judai the card that says let hit be a substitute for any fusion monster. But then at that point, it becomes a crutch and it becomes something that Judai usually doesn't do, which is constantly use one card to basically get everything. So, yeah, I understand why they probably went to Neos, but man, Shining Flare Wingman is just cool looking. Yeah, he's super fucking cool. Love his design. Yeah, I remember when he came out, I tried so hard to pull him. I was like, oh, I, I need him. I need him for my elements of hero deck that I'm constantly losing to at local tourneys. But damn it, if I had him, <laughs> it would change everything. <laughs> that would be the difference maker, yeah. Yes, and I don't think I was ever able to get him from his original pack, but I think eventually they released a more common version. But I was not able to save the day. Turn, turns out having another fusion monster was not my answer at the time. I would have to wait till uh, the Stratus Even when, out. like, the good, air quotes, elemental hero fusions came out, like the ones yeah. that were just elemental hero plus attribute of monster, yeah. like, you know, Great Tornado and all that kind of stuff, um, I still ran Shining Flare Wingman and one Spark Man in my deck because obviously you played a shitload of fusion substitutes if you played elemental heroes. Yeah, yeah. So I still ran them. 
just just cause. Just the, sometimes you just need that one card, man. Yeah, you need the, the card that's like your card, you know? Yeah, I can understand that. And he is a good one, too. He was a good dude to show up in here. So good he got his own title in it. That's how good it is. Mm-hmm. So. And he got the cover of a uh, box, a, a booster yeah. box. Yeah, that was the booster box I tried to pull so much. Mm-hmm. Never got him. All right, anything else to say about this episode before we move on? Nope. All right, cool. We're going on to episode 34, which is called The Fear Factor, or as it's known in Japanese, A Steaming Traveler's Mood, Blue Eyes, White Dragon. One of them is a reference to a fucking show, and the other one mentions the fact that the Blue Eyes is going to be in it. Yep. (laughs) Guess which one is the Japanese version. Yep. Uh, so, so this one, um, Judai is kind of freaking out. He's starting to get some some nightmares about uh, the Shadow Riders because their shit's getting pretty serious. Um, he wakes up and he is starting to realize that he doesn't really like dueling when it's for life or death. Um, they try to cha- take him down to like a hot spring to hang out and. Uh, they go to what they call like the Ojama Yellow's like we're going to the dual spirit like party. It's like a big important place for dual spirits. Uh and they go and the spirit of Kaiba Man, um, a card that Kaiba made that's just himself <laughs> in a blue eyes <laughs> helmet, uh challenges Judai to a duel. And Kaiba Man makes a big stink of like, if you lose, I'll keep your friends forever. And Judai's like, I accept, etc. Um, and then he holds up like the blue eyes white dragons, and he's like, they've been wanting to fight you. And Judai's like, oh, fuck. Um, he does eventually lose uh, to a fusion combo of blue eyes ultimate dragon and defusion. Um, but actually, he was benevolent, and he was just here to show Judai that it's okay to lose. Um, and that to, to ease his fear, and that not every duel is going to be like these high-energy ones that he deals with. He, and then they everyone goes back to with where they were. Yep, pretty much. It's, it's almost like a bottle episode. Like, he goes bit. here, duels Kaiba, learns a lesson, and that's that. As I put it, shows up, beats Judai, teaches lesson, leaves. <laughs> He's mm-hmm. done. <laughs> No longer will he be mentioned. So, before we get into this episode, it should be noted that this is the start of the new OP and the new ED as well. So, say goodbye to the Ska. It's time for some 99% is the new opening, and so is Wake Up Your Heart. Mm, Uh, No more hallelujah. No more hallelujah. I love that song. I like annoying. all the openings, but this one is actually my least favorite OP two. Yeah, uh, funny enough, I end up I really like "Wake Up Your Heart" a lot more. And then I learned later on, Judai's actual VA sings this song. Uh huh. It's like all right, so I like "Wake Up Your Heart." I wanted to do this for uh, Gintama, but I wasn't able to figure it out because of fucking Sony and its constant being like, "You can't use this 15 seconds." But since nobody seems to care about Yu-Gi-Oh GX, I think I'll be able to actually swap out the song. <laughs> So, to go with the fact that we have new OP and ED, so it'll probably be Wake Up Your Heart, because um, it has a sick opening guitar <laughs> guitar riff, actually, that I don't think you actually hear on the ED, but it goes with it. Um, and I also like songs that scream English words at me, because I feel like I can <laughs> understand it a little bit more. So you're saying the end should be uh, Mr. Raindrop? Yes! Oh, that's I'm still top. Tom. In terms of our tiers of uh, OPs and EDs, Mr. Raindrop, number one ED still. Mm-hmm. Oh, easily. Mr. Easy. Raindrop is like a peak anime ED. I love that thing. I yes. still listen to that song just on my own. Me too. That's also where I learned Wake Up Your Heart is not on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> but the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX theme is, so hey. They're trying something, but they need to get on that because literally every other Yu-Gi-Oh series had their OP and ED up except for <laughs> the ones past the first couple episodes of GX. So I was like, come on, get better with this. Get and then, of course, together. yeah, get your shit together. 
Um, and the new OP and ED looks pretty nice. I also think it's pretty funny, I made a mention of this, that the e the opening in English is the same <laughs> throughout the entirety of GX. Yes. Uh, Which is weird. Four Kids always did that shit. Like, every season was just the same one. Yes, um, it was. Even though Which it, is strange. It, it only really fit for the first Yu-Gi-Oh! Because it was just, like, vaguely EDM music filled up, followed by Your Move. Yeah, it was just the word Your Move, and then, like... Yu-Gi-Oh! King of Games. It's just like threatening music, basically. Good song, though. I do like that song. I like that song, too. <laughs> it's a very good song. Um, yeah, but it, there's no like lyrics. It's just yeah. words. Hyperdrive might be the only one that actually fits throughout the entirety of it, because there's that part at the end of Hyperdrive that gets weirdly like... Uh, like, for real, for a brief moment before it changes. Yes, Hyperdrive is also really good. Yeah. Um... But, yeah, but, Get Your Game On fits very thematically with, like, Season 1, where it's very yeah. much, like... Well, this is technically still Season 1. Yeah. But very thematically with, like... School. The fucking around portions of GX, you know? Um, not so much when people start going down. Yeah, when shit starts going down, not so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, Arc V has uh, Can You Feel the Power, which really stops him fitting when you're, like, talking about, like, war, and Yuya's like, all oh, these people's souls have been lost. And then the episode goes, Can You Feel the Power? <laughs> you plus me. <laughs> Time to feel the victory. Yeah, I mean, that do happens in GX sometimes, too, because it's like, don't get your game on, <laughs> and then the episode starts, and Juno's like, they're all dead. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> dead. You better play your cards right. <laughs> Come on and get your game on. <sighs> Never taught us back in class. <laughs> <laughs> Some days I really got to hit, hit or miss. <laughs> Tough times, hard climbs. We'll take a vote take them on together. together. And then the right episode down. starts, and he's like, "Why? Why are they all dead?" <laughs> As he cries over the corpse of show and he goes, Let's go, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX! <laughs> Generation X! Generation X. Generation Next, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really funny. The, we, every time we talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! We will always find a way to back to this conversation because it's really funny. But anyway, <laughs> to get back to the actual episode itself, I thought the, the new ED and OP were good. Um... There's a really funny bit here. The continuation, I'm going to put him on the mark. I'm going to say right now, Discoala stocks up. Because every time Discoala shows up, it's really fucking funny. And he shows up here briefly in the in the hot sauna in the beginning. And he's just like running forward. And he's going... <laughs> and then Hayato <laughs> looks and goes, Discoala? <laughs> he just... Yeah, it, the funniest bit about Discoala to me is that every time uh, Descoala appears, someone goes, Oh, Descoala! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Like they, oh, hey, it's Descoala! There he is! Mm -hmm. And there's a part where uh, Sho, Descoala gives Sho his glasses. He's like, oh, thank you very much, Hayato. And then, he's, and then he hears Hayato in front of him. And then he puts on the glasses and he goes, A oh, Descoala? <laughs> he doesn't say anything because <laughs> he just says Descoala. Which is fucking great. Uh, I loved Kaiba Man showing up. I like that his <laughs> he basically lost to a uh, to a blue eyes deck, which is pretty funny. Um, continuing the theme of also this is a very rare Kaiba W because Judai was able to beat someone using a Yugi deck, but he was unable to stop three thousand attack beater dragons. Yeah, well, I think the implication here is that the the guy using the Yugi deck was just a copycat, but this is mm -hmm. actually like the spirit of Kaiba in the card. Yeah, so he's actually able to, like, duel against them. He's got so, the skills. He's not just cheesing it. Yeah, so it was nice to see him there. I like seeing the blue eye stuff. Always cool to see him. Uh, and then I like the end of it here, where the, they show the dual spirits of Wing Karibo and Descoala, who obviously they're big friends with their with their duelist. You notice that Sho has no Viacaroid next to him. None of the Viacaroids like Sho. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's implied to be like a very important um, ability to be mm -hmm. able to see spirits that not many people can do. Yeah, um, and I don't know if it's ever touched on why Hayato can see Desquala. I think it's because he eventually becomes a card designer, right? So he maybe he he does like... eventually, but not for a while from now. It might be just be a thing talking about like hidden potential about how. 
maybe you know, it's very possible. Even, yeah. So a little yeah, bit of... he, his whole thing is that yeah, he's uh he loves the game, but he's just not cut out to be a duelist, but eventually he becomes a uh, a card designer. And it's actually pretty cool, minor spoilers for like 7 years from now. Boom. Um he designs a card specifically for Judah at one point. Boom. He comes back. There you go. Yeah, it's a very cool little throwback cuz once he becomes a card designer, he leaves the school obviously. Yeah. Cuz he, he just has goes a job. To work yeah he's got a fucking job he's yeah. got to go to work now um <laughs> <laughs> my man's got to go to the office exactly um, he has a zoom call in with pegasus yeah he's got a remote work for pegasus in like an hour <laughs> um but yeah he does uh he comes back later on specifically for the purposes of uh giving judai a special card that he made specifically for him which that's is pretty cool, cool. yeah that's cool uh, I also should mention, I don't remember if I mentioned it, they did eventually make a Wake Up Your Heart card called Wake Up Your Elemental Hero with basically all the Elemental Heroes but Judai. Uh, and you want to take a wild guess as to what the stats are for this uh, Elemental Hero fusion? Is it 2,500? It sure is! <laughs> <laughs> 2,500, 21 defense, but to be fair, that is the exact stat line of Elemental Hero... Um, Shining Flare Wingman. So they decided <laughs> to use his. That's so, funny. Yeah. I also I think really they have like a this guy. Reasonably similar effect to Shining Flare Wingman as well. But that it, I, I think it literally has the effect of all the elemental heroes that are on it and the hero kids. They literally put hero all kids. the effects on I it. I forgot that the hero kids are on that. Yeah. Hero Not kids. elemental heroes, by the way. No. Also, Wing Karibo's on here. Not an elemental hero. Neo Bowman is on here. Blade Edge. Uh, by the way, this is a killer's row of dudes. Necro Shade and Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman. I gotta say, um, it's really funny to me that the Hero Kids are like a big function of Judai's deck. Like he uses them a lot. Yeah. Uh, they are not hero archetype cards. No, they're not. That's what they always are not made me classified angry. as any of the hero. Like none of them actually have synergy with Hero Kid. No. And I remember when someone told me when I was like, I'm going to use emergency, whatever, to call out an elemental hero. And I picked up Hero Kid, and he's like, that's not an elemental hero. And I looked at it, and I said, oh, shit, you're right. And I put it back in the deck and picked Sporkman. <laughs> and it's funny, because not only are they not an elemental hero, they're not any kind of hero. Because no. all, of, like, the the archetypes are, like, the word hero in capital letters. Four capital letters means it's a hero archetype card. So when a card means a hero archetype card, it will always be in all capitals. Hero Kid is not. So it's literally just the word hero. Yeah, completely unrelated. Just some Which kids. Which is super funny, considering they made such a big fucking deal out of, like, he's one of the Aces hero cards, but he's totally not. No. They may as well put Rottweiler on there instead of them. I think Rottweiler has done much more. <laughs> for Yeah, Jedi Rottweiler than... pulls a lot of weight. He takes a lot of lumps for the team. Exactly. His fun function is to die. I to think fucking die. To, yeah. to facilitate more fusion. Yeah. Meanwhile, we got Neo Bubble Man, and I'm not even fucking sure when he's going to be showing up. I don't even remember when. He does get use him eventually, but he I remember it's, everyone's like, ha ha, he's fucking Neo Bubble Man. And it's funny because Neo Bubble Man is like one of those cards where using Bubble Man and Metamorphosis would be better. Yes, than, than getting Neo Bubble Man. It's so crazy. Neo Bubble Man is you can't actually summon him in the game now because Metamorphosis is banned because it's a very good card. Uh-huh. So the card that <laughs> Neo Bubble Man requires as a cost is ten times better. You would actually be better off just having the two cards and using it to get a fusion monster from the deck. It's crazy. It's really funny that they made it that way, but it maybe also shows why it's it's such a Judai design to a character. For a card, to, for the requirements to summon this card is to get rid of a better card. Uh huh. To get rid of a good card to play your shitty hero. Yep, it's really funny. And now, let's move on to the next episode. We've got episode thirty-five, which in English is called. There was also no differences because the the previous episode was pretty. Almost pretty, nothing to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's pretty simple. There was nothing like you could like really make a difference in adaptation because it's just a simple very simple duel it's not like kaiba man goes like he's not like drinking crazy beer or something he's just yeah he's not like violently assaulting them he's just like they're just playing the game 
That'd be crazy <laughs> if it started off with him shooting the Dark Magician and then saying, all right, let's <laughs> duel. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next episode, episode 35, which is the last one we're talking about. Sibling rivalry, or as it's called in Japanese, Union of Brothers Ojama Delta Hurricane. So this one is uh, Manjomi's brothers come to like basically fuck with him more. They want to. It's they're they're trying to get Duel Academy from Kaiba, and Kaiba's like, "You're so shitty at this fucking game that any student at that academy can beat you. I, I promise you that." If you duel one and win, you can have the school for free. You can just take it. Um, they decide that Manjome is going to be the one to duel them. And so he has to win in the duel, but he's not allowed to use any monsters with more than 500 attack points. So he has to make a completely new deck, uh, which he ends up, I think, getting the cards by going to this well that the other students throw their shitty cards into. Yes, it is a cursed um, place of people throwing shit yes. cards. Uh, and they, I believe that's where they find the other two Ojama brothers. They, like, re- recruit the trio officially now. Because uh, Judai mm-hmm. goes with him. Um, Judai gets some good homie points in this one, because they're like, ah, Benjome is nothing, and Dude, I was like, that's not true. I've dueled him. I know how good he is, blah, blah, blah. And it was, yeah. it was cool. they're, they're thinking he's going to throw the game. And he's just showing up like, yeah, not the Manjome Thunder I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they, they do end up going to this well and finding all of the shitty cards that permit Chaz to uh, duel in this duel. Yeah, because the, the um, duel stip- stipulation is 500 attack or less. Yes, and then he ends up revealing when he gets there that not only is it 500 or less, they all have literally zero. Which pisses off his brother. Yes, because of course the brother's like, I have all the rare, I bought all the rarest cards with all the money, I'm gonna win. Which is really um, funny because they actually show that he has parallel rare cards and they're super shiny. Yeah, they like glow when they're summoned, I believe. They like like have a holographic effect on them. Yeah, they do. Uh, of course, Manjome does win the duel in the end uh, with the combined power of his Ojamas, which he fucking hates because they're like now basically like his trademark monsters are these shitty, awful little demon monster things. Yeah. Uh, he has a real good speech about it where he says, like, it took these terrible monsters for me to realize I'm not that bad. There's something worse than me. I'm better than these guys, at least. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, and then he wins, and I think the the brother wants to have another, like, he wants to, because, like, we're going to get revenge. He's like, no, no, don't you see? He's already, like, learning, and people are, like, chanting Manjome Thunder at, for him. Mm-hmm. So, it ends on a good terms. I think that's probably the last we'll see of his brothers, because they're, he's doing what he said of what they want, right? Which is becoming a top duelist. Well, yeah, you actually he's... Know, he's- Fulfilling the general idea, but like they also kind of decide, like, all right, we'll leave him alone. Yeah, he's he seems to know about this dueling stuff. Uh, tell us the differences in adaptations before I give any of my notes here. All right, so in the uh Japanese version, there's a scene where Manjome complains that the Slifer dorm he is now part of is insufficient to hold all of his rich boy things. Uh, the dub cuts that out. Um, in the English dub, um, Benjome is basically like, I don't have the cards that'll fit the handicap anyway, so we might as well just give up. In the Japanese version, um, Benjome mm-hmm. wanted to to build a deck himself for it, and everyone else just kind of tags along. Uh, and then Kaiser is the one who says, hey, I don't think you have any cards that actually fit that. And then they're like, oh, fuck. And he Doesn't. goes like, I only have one, and he shows them Ojama Yellow, and then everyone goes, eh? <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, uh. And this is uh, so the shitty brother at one point reveals a bunch of cards. Um, the he, cards are changed for some reason in the English mm-hmm. version. Um, but it's kind of neat. So in the, I don't know if it was intentional, but they're supposed to be dragon cards, and in the original version they are mostly dragon cards 
except for I think Lord of D is shown. Um, in the English version, they're changed to almost just random what the fuck cards. But two of the cards are cards that are used by Yami Mark, those being Jurageto and the Legendary Fiend. And in English, uh, the voice actor for Yami Mark also plays that particular Manjomi brother. So wow. that's kind of neat. That is cool. Yeah, don't know if that was intentional, but that is kind of neat. Yeah, who knows? But it's still cool. Uh, in the dub version, when they're on the way to the well, uh, Jaden is actually singing Get Your Game On. <laughs> 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 yes, they're literally singing that as they're walking. God, right. That's funny. <laughs> he doesn't sing at all of the Japanese version. Um, he should have though. He should have been singing "Wake Up." <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if only. Um, when Chaz mentions the lesson that he learns from the Ojamas, um. In the dub version, the lesson that he learns from them is that it's okay to be lazy and gross. Um, in the Japanese version, it's that it's uh, okay to work together and that strength can be found anywhere, even at the bottom of the barrel, as long as you do your best. So, completely different. Yeah, 100%. Um, in the Japanese version, they kind of like have some respect and stuff, and they're like, you know hey, he's grown up more than you thought, and maybe we should just leave him alone. In the dub version, the brothers mock one another. And then um, the brother that didn't duel was like, yeah, it was only one duel, but now everyone thinks um, Manjome is a hero. You were fucked us over. <laughs> um, and they're just like pissed off, and they leave, basically. No. Um, no one is allowed to grow in the dub. <laughs> no, in the dub, everyone's just an asshole at all times. Um... In the <laughs> in the Japanese version, Kaiba is told, "Hey, uh, FYI, Manjome won," and he said, "Yeah, I know. You don't have to tell me that. I already knew that he was going to win. I don't care." In the English version, he goes, <laughs> "Those two brothers have a lot to learn about world domination," and he hangs <laughs> up the phone. <laughs> so good. Those brief <laughs> moments where Kaiba was in this episode elevated it so much. <laughs> Oh my god, I just love Kaiba so much. It's funny. <laughs> uh, and, oh, there, there's some mistakes as well. Yes, there are. Um, at some point, no one bothered to read the script, I guess, to the episode, because one of the brothers was like, you can't use any monsters as more than 500 life points, which are not a thing that monsters have. Nope. Uh, it's attack points that they have. Um, this is in the both versions, not the dub. Uh, the Unhappy Maiden apparently, I guess, has an anime-only effect. I don't know that, but uh, when the Unhappy Maiden is destroyed, it should end the battle phase, but Chaz slash Manjome says, your whole turn is over now. Wow. <laughs> yeah, which I guess is fine. That makes Unhappy um, Maiden ten times better if it just automatically ended the fucking turn. Skips the entire turn, yeah. And then um, in the in the dub, because they constantly replace the art uh, in the dub, there is a shitload of really good cards in the bottom of the well. So there is Archlord Zerato in there. There's Blue Eyes Toon Dragon in there. And there's literally a Cyber Dragon. Wow. The the ace card of the best duelist at the school is at the bottom of this well of shitty cards. Where do you think you got um, him? I, you no went well, well done. <laughs> That's where Kaiser got him from. <laughs> Damn it, who fucking revealed my secret hiding place? <laughs> my secret well of good cards. That's where I um, keep my Cyber Dragons. Though to be fair, uh, in the Japanese version, apparently there is a Jinzo at the bottom of the well, which is also a really good card, so it's it's not universal to the dub, but the dub has more good cards in there. Yeah, fair enough. That's still pretty funny. I like the idea of like the island of misfit toys, but for Yu-Gi-Oh cards, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards nobody wants to use. <laughs> so they mm -hmm. get thrown in there. There's some also funny ones that are good, but not be at the time, like Skull Servant was in there. And eventually there is a Skull Servant deck that if you play against and you kind of fuck around with it, it can kill you. But at the time, it was completely worthless. 
So, um, some notes actually fun enough to, while we're talking about some cards in there. One of the cards in there is Griggle, and it reminded me of us when we played um, Sacred <laughs> Sacred Stone, not Sacred Stones, uh, Sacred, Sacred cards. cards. Uh, get Grigged, everyone's favorite, <laughs> the Griggle. Mm-hmm. Get <laughs> was that the one that we thought had made like had the awful sounding name that they made fun of his name that it should say its name in a gross creepy way i think it might have been yeah i, I think it was griggle because i distinctly griggle. remember you going griggle. <laughs> <It's> like, uh, <laughs> uh, okay yes that sounds like us a lot of stuff was said in that specific playthrough <laughs> it was a wild world roller, roller coaster of a time I should also mention Relinquished was in that pile, and Relinquished is not bad. <laughs> That's literally no, the eighth monster no. of Pegasus. I guess he did technically fit the, um, the attack point requirement, though. Yeah, he did. If anything, this could have been an easy like Relinquish sweep, if we're being 100% honest. But he, did, he chose a different way of doing it, which is fine. He also used a Forbidden card, which was Painful Choice, which is insanely good. Yes, very good card. Yeah, insanely good, and it kind of shows here. I actually thought that what he was using Painful Choice at the beginning was that he was using it to fit out his deck so that he could use um, the Enchanted Fitting Room to guarantee he would draw Ojama Yellow, Ojama Green, and Ojama Black. But in actuality, he was using it so he could power up Chaos Necromancer even more and to also get Thunder Crash and stuff like that. Um, I like the Ojamas. I think the Ojamas are funny. It It is... It is pretty funny that at this point, Manjome is now kind of pigeonholed into using the Ojamas. Yes, he is now stuck with the the shittiest fucking (laughs) cards. Some of the worst. And similar to Judai, he has these guys at one copy each, and so much of the Ojama support is useless without the Ojamas. You really need them. It sure is. So it's going to be amazing to see him, how he uses them from here on in. I also really liked the when they were all on the field, they were all happy celebrating, and he immediately used Thunder Crash to kill them all. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what? <laughs> and they just fucking die. Yeah, really he's like, good. your time here is done. Inflict the damage and leave. Uh, I also like when he summoned Chaos Necromancer, you got to see the spirits of all the shitty cards coming back to attack for one final hit. I thought that was very good. Um, I like the end of it where uh, now they just hang out at his house. <laughs> all the all the chaos spirits yeah, from the world are now like with him. Yeah, they're all his bros. Yeah, they're all his bros, and he's not very happy with that, which is funny. Um, let me see. I like seeing the different parallel rare. Like I said in the there, I really liked when Kaiba showed up because he's like saying his specific statement of there is not one duelist academy stu- duelist that will lose to the likes of you. He's including show in that who is the worst duelist the shittiest duelist of all time yeah, yeah. he says if uh-huh. you can win whatever you get the school for free and it's such a bygone conclusion of like no my that my the kids at my school are so fucking good that you couldn't even beat the worst of them this kid is trashed and i feed him mackerel and guess what this little goblin creature will kick your ass if you try <laughs> It's a very, like, kind of thing where he takes pride in them, even though he is literally shitting on a good portion of yeah, them. Yeah, the one who is, like, the worst to them. <laughs> He's still, like, proud of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, when, when he says, I don't need your worthless report, of course he won. He was like, whatever, I had that shit out of my mind the second he left my office. I have yeah, shit to I wasn't do. Even, I wasn't even thinking about it. No, no, excuse me, as I work on this machine that will allow me to see the Pharaoh <laughs> back to imported shit. Let me see the designs of the water bottle. I need to see if they're up to snuff. That's what I assume Kai was doing on his day-to-day ba- basis. I also really think it's funny they don't want to show his face. So it's just his silhouette back with him in the in the outfit, which is pretty nice. But yeah, it was a fun duel. It was fun watching it. Um, uh, I like Monjome. And this was a good way of kind of, I guess, closing the loop with his brothers and bringing the, the end of Ojama Yellow every episode saying, hey, can we go find my brothers? And Ojama uh, and Manjome going, shut up, zero attack, which is what he's been calling Yellow for the time being. Uh-huh. <laughs> and which is funny because it also sets up here of the zero attack. Um, oh, yeah. The other thing I like before I forget is that I like this constant theme that GX has going on where Monjome can't build a deck like a normal person. 
he has to go on some kind of journey to find cards. Because that was the same way when he was in North Academy, where he had to go around the entire island to collect 40 cards, and then he would be, then he would have his deck, and in here he has to go to a cursed well to find zero yes, attack he always monsters. has to, to go on some life-changing mission yeah, to, which I think, to get his cards. Yes, which is very funny. Uh, yeah, so it was a lot of fun. I really like Monjome, so this was a good episode for me. And I can't wait for our next episode where it looks like the start of... Because uh, in the next episode preview, they show Masao with his fucking bomber jacket back. Yes, he gets his uh, fucking suicide bomber coat back. Yep, and he's going to be dueling a giant woman from what it looks like. So uh-huh. yeah, good episode. How do you feel about it, Zan? Good. Real good episode. Right. Uh, I like any time that Manjome gets to do good, cool things because I really like his character. Yeah, me too. Manjome is very good now. Stocks on a constant rise as long as he's there. So, let's look up into the next things for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX because it looks like... Uh, hmm. We have to take a quick look at the season looking at it. So, next in theory should be episodes 36, 37, 38, 39... Uh, 40, but now I don't know if 40 is a two... No, 40 is a singular. Yep, so 40 we'll be going... is a single episode. Oh, and I see uh, a certain Don Zalug in the pictures of one of these, so... <laughs> yes, Good. there is, in fact, a Don Zalug episode. Nice. Oh, and I saw an uptick for the, some other future ones. We're getting close to the... Oh my god, does that mean... Okay, no, after 40, and then we'll, we're basically three shows away from being at the end of season one for GX. Yep, we're getting Pretty real close. close. Yeah, we're getting dangerously close then. And thank you everyone who's joining us with us. So this is the end of the show now, so it's time for me to pull up the good old ending bit. Here we go, Zen. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more of Zen's content, you can go to Zen's channel where he talks Shonen Jump manga with the Ocean Man, Oceanus, over in Shonen and Chill. I now finally link your channel at the end bit, so <laughs> <laughs> I finally remembered to do that. I did that. It's been doing that for a couple weeks now. I just haven't brought it up until just now. So now you can gladly click on that and see more of Zen's stuff and follow more of Zen's things. For me, as always, you can find me right here, releasing whatever video I feel like, and hopefully you'll end up watching and enjoying it, whatever it may be. I do various stuff. We need to get back into watching some more commercials. We were a little bit busy on Wednesday, Ew, so yeah. hopefully this Wednesday. We got some good stuff lined up, and we also have other games to play as well, so always so busy when we only have two days out of the week to record, but we make do with what we can. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching another episode of Shonen Archive. I have to start thinking because now that we have so many for GX and Gintama, I might have to actually start making like separate playlists so you can see only the... Potentially, if you just wanted to see the Gintama stuff, you could see it here. If you only wanted to see the GX stuff, you could see it here all in one go. Um, yeah, it's funny because the way to do it. Yeah, it's probably the way we do it. I like keeping the numbers on because I like having an actual number to say what episode of Shonen Archive this is. But, you know, to keep things more in line for everyone else, maybe a clearer way to go through it, because <laughs> it advances every other episode, which is funny because it happens every week regardless, so, you know, I'll figure that out, I think. We need to start figuring some of that stuff out by the time we go to the third series, which will likely be something that's coming up soon. If, you can, if you're can, if you up with Shonen Jump, you should be able to figure <laughs> it out. But we won't mention mysterious. it. Mysterious. Yes, mysterious. If you can figure it out, feel free to tell us. Um, I'm sure you'll figure it out by the time it comes up. Don't worry about it. Everyone will be talking about it. <laughs> but we will be one of those people. But thank you very much for watching, everyone. We appreciate it a whole bunch. We'll see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out. <laughs> Oh